Hey guys, Justin here with Pursuit Church. Thought I'd just make a, a quick video. We're starting a new Wednesday night series uh, on the life of Moses and his calling and his character. Um, and in light of that, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on uh, in our nation uh, as it relates to the situation that Moses had to face. Essentially, what he was called to deal with and lead the people out of to deliver them from was the spirit of tyranny, uh, even the, the Antichrist spirit, uh, sort of overarching that, where you had uh, Pharaoh as this type and shadow of the Antichrist and his kingdom with all the false gods um, and all the slavery, the oppression, uh, the killing of uh, infant uh, males, all of that trying to take out the seed of Christ, trying to... Um, put a thumb on the people of God to thwart the plan and the will of God to that arrogance, that pride that's there. Um, I mean, it's just all throughout and woven into the story. And so the parallels are just striking uh, in terms of what was going on then and where we are now uh, in America. I just wanted to, to make some commentary uh, on that and just give you some examples. Uh, and, and of course, Many of you already know that this has uh, been going on. There's been a, a moral decay. There's been a intentional sort of deconstruction of our, our founding, of our roots and our principles, um, and a moving toward, uh, you know, really an authoritarianism or a, or a tyranny with, you know, socialist, communistic, Marxist-type ideals and, and principles and it's just been a slow boil, but now it seems like there's this uh, acceleration. There's this blatant um, suppression of truth and of stories, and there's a, a narrative and agenda that's being pushed at such an alarming speed and um, with a tenacity and intensity, a hostility that we saw uh, even with COVID where there were these uh, control uh, mechanisms put in place uh, and all these politicians vying for what level of power they could get, what things can we pass. It was sort of a testing ground or what What if we sort of reset um, our economy, reset the structure of things? How far can we go in using this crisis um, for our own benefit? So I know that's a big intro, um, but really, I just want to, you know, just go down a list. Uh, and once again, many of you have, have seen this trend happening, and this is no surprise to you. It doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist or a prophet to, to see the signs and, and where things are trending. But I want to say at the outset that uh, just as, as God was preparing a deliverer in Moses and he was pre preparing a people uh, for that deliverance, um, God is doing that now, uh, and He's doing it on a, on a larger scale with the body of Christ. And so um, all these things are leading uh, to Jesus' return, ultimately. And He's sovereign. He's in control. This is His plan. He's going to expose uh, all of this corruption. He's going to expose all the wickedness. There's a plumb line that's being drawn where people are going to choose what who they're going to serve, what side are they going to be on. I'm not talking about left or right. I'm talking about good and evil. I'm talking about uh, Christ and Satan. I mean, that's it's it's getting to the wheat and the tares coming into full maturity. Um, these things rising into this cataclysmic level to where people will be without excuse, and they'll have to decide, are they going to humble themselves and repent? Are they going to harden their hearts and continue to rebel and uh, and be deceived and uh, allow their lust for power and all the different things of the flesh to take over? So let's just go down this, and I'll try to be brief with some of this because that was a really long intro, and I didn't want this to be a long video. But we are going to start doing our... Or navigate podcasting hopefully more and on a more consistent basis. Uh, and so be looking for that. And hopefully I'll have some different guests to talk to about you know, current uh, subject matter issues, whether it's end time related or not. 
um, and we're just going to have some organic uh, discussions about different things. So it's going to be good, and it'll be you know biblical, and hopefully it'll be relevant and helpful to you as well. But this spirit of tyranny and this antichrist spirit that uh, is is uh, raising its its head in these days, we can see it in all these different forms and fashions. But first and foremost, you know we have a uh, a huge uh, out of control, corrupt, and dishonest government uh, that is obsessed with power, and there's there's no way to get around it. And we're seeing it in all the different ways that they want to, you know, pack the Supreme Court or get rid of the filibuster, or you know, pass legislation uh, before we can even see what's in it, um, or even uh, bypass the legislature altogether and together, and just let judges make decisions from the bench. Um, until the Supreme Court is able to deal with it and decide if it's constitutional. And oftentimes they know that it's not constitutional, um, and they do it anyway. And so we have, uh, you know, these things just running rampant. Uh, Obviously, our spending is out of control. You know, we're $30 trillion in debt and climbing. Um, And the, the Federal Reserve has just been printing money like there's no tomorrow, and it seems like uh, this um, spending, this trend, this uh, kicking the can down the road, this um, seemingly uh, you know modern monetary theory thing that they have going on that they've put all their stock into, uh, it's on purpose in the way that it's driving our economy, you know, into this downward spiral where we have out of control inflation and interest rates. And, and all these things that affect uh, gas prices and food prices, everyday Americans. It seems like they're trying, and of course with the energy sector, um, they're, they want to get rid of all fossil fuels and they want to go to all this green type stuff and they want to do it immediately and they want to use climate change as a way to panic everyone out and to force these policies in that if we don't do this, you know, the earth is going to, you know, melt down. Uh, it's unsustainable. There's going to be this and that consequence and all this, and much of it uh, not a very solid scientific basis, we'll say. But it does seem to be a diabolical, intentional plan to create uh, a, this sort of reset, so to speak, and a word that you've heard a lot, uh, where we've got this EGS you know, system coming into place, this environmental governance and, and social you know, standards that they want to put uh, on corporations and banks and everything else, which will trickle down once again to everyday Americans and force us into this particular uh, system and towards a digital currency, which once again, there, there'll be issues with, uh, you know, tracking and, and issues with uh, being able to to uh, make certain purchases or be able to get a loan or whatever it is, these, these doors they can open and close based on an EGS score and where you fit on that particular scale. And so it's really scary because, once again, this government is obsessed uh, with power, and they'll do anything uh, to get it and to maintain it. And even the, the the DOJ, the Department of Justice, has been politicized and weaponized clearly with what's going on uh, with former President Trump and so many of the other stories that we've had even before Trump with, uh, you know, the IRS targeting conservative organizations and, and groups and whatnot. And you can go, you know, down the list on the way that there's been a two-tier justice system and that you, you allow BLM rights to go on and this and that, and yet pro-life folks cannot protest. They'll get arrested or organizations will be defaced or vandalized or attacked uh, without investigation, without consequence. And so there's no doubt that uh, that's happening, and it's really frightening. While at the same time, they'll just straight up lie to you and twist the facts, uh, suppress political speech, information, facts, stories, that they'll highlight particular ones that have a a race uh, element to it, or, uh, you know, uh, if if it's uh, a Republican at fault or whatever it may be, try to spin it in such a way uh, or that, you know, it's a white nationalist, you know, Christianity, you know, thing where they're being, uh, you know, bigots. And, and uh, so they're trying to cause this divide, not just economically and whatnot, but also also racially and uh, whatever way they can uh, to cause division with identity politics, you know, class and religion and race and everything else. Uh, and, of course, that even 
gets into our, our school system, the indoctrination in our educational system uh, with, you know, CRT um, and, the, and the transgenderism, you know, movement, the 1612 Project, all these things that are essentially wanting to revise and rewrite history, erase it, you know, once again, highlight certain aspects, demonize, you know, our founding uh, and create this whole uh, scenario that America is, is inherently evil and uh, so we have to uh, continually bring all this up, dredge all this up with all this offense and unforgiveness and pitting one side against another and just in this constant cycle that's there. And once again, this is, this is purposeful. This is that spirit of tyranny. This is that antichrist spirit um, that is, uh, you know, in, in large part, influencing uh, many of our uh, leaders and sectors uh, of society. Uh, so you just continue on from our, our educational system, you know, even as young as kindergartners are, are being taught that, hey, you can, you know, change your gender or talk to, you know, uh, told about sexuality and uh, talk to, you know, talk to about consent and about different sexual acts. And it's, and it's explicit and it's in, it's in the libraries. It's, it's available. It's, it's basically, you know, pornography. Uh, that's there in our in our schools um, that is uh, force feeding uh, without the consent of parents this uh, ideology to our young people and of course we, we can't even tell male from female you know now uh, we're destroying female sports and privacy and opening up all these potential you know dangers along those lines uh, and yet we want to uh, you know somehow, educate our kids when, when, you know, when there's all this contradiction in biology and everything else. And, uh, it's just, it's insane. And so with a rational mind, you, you, it's incomprehensible. It, it doesn't make sense that there's all of this, uh, movement in, in this direction, unless it's spiritual. It's a, it's a spiritual battle where there's demonic powers and principalities, where there's warfare that's being waged in the heavenly realm that's uh, striking at the heart of men, blinding, you know, their eyes and their minds. I mean, this is really what's going on. It's a, it's a corruption. It, it's a twisting. It's what the, it's what Satan always does is he, he takes half truths and he takes certain gaps when it comes to, to, to human longings and desires. And, and he'll use those to his advantage. He'll counterfeit that and he'll paint this particular picture and uh, mankind and our pride and everything else, we we fall for that bait. We, it appeals to us, and so we will take that on. There's this whole narcissistic thing that we have that that we can, uh, you know, create our own uh, uh, version of whatever you, you, you know, you name it, and uh, and and we can. Uh, decide good and evil for ourselves. We can decide when life begins. We can decide who lives and dies. We can decide who gets this, who wins and loses, all these different categories. And that's what's happened. And so what happens is, is it goes all the way down to our family unit being attacked and decimated. Um, you know, the nuclear family, you know, I mean, we, we kill our babies for goodness sake. We, uh, you know, abortion the issue of, of, you know, Roe versus Wade and that being overturned. And, uh, and once again, uh, all of a sudden, um, there's all of this language that's being changed. There's, there's all these euphemisms, you know, being used. And of course this has been going on, but now this is like their platform. Uh, and they want to talk about, you know, uh, access to health and, and women's health and, and, you know, all these different things where, where they change definitions and morph the language. And it just uh, goes to show you that, I mean, it is a, uh, it's destructive. I mean, it is, uh, you know, anti-life even. I mean, that's the depth of it uh, just knows no end. Um, and so uh, it's, it's, it's what's happening, and it's really sad. I don't want to ramble on about this, but these are just some of the examples uh, that are brought to mind um, with our, our borders being open. Uh, I mean, that just exacerbates uh, all these issues where um, you have sanctuary cities that uh, are saying, yeah, you know, let them in. But then 
when Texas and Florida and whoever else is busting them or flying them in there, like, well, wait a minute, you know, and then it kind of changes the, the game a little bit. But thousands and thousands are coming across, and there's trafficking, human trafficking, drug trafficking, all kinds of different uh, issues, sickness, whatever else, disease, um, and we're, we're not able to, to deal with these people appropriately. Um, and so they, they're off grid, and um, it's, it's all over the place. It's unsustainable. And then, of course, it messes with all kinds of, of systems and issues with uh, the everyday lives of Americans. And so th- this, this whole buildup that's happening, uh, it's, uh, it's real. And uh, so I say all that, and it sounds pretty bleak and pretty dark, but it is a wake-up call. And it is uh, the spiritual reality that is on display in, in such a, a clear way. And we have to make a decision, uh, much like Moses did, uh, that we've, if we've been in the wilderness, if we've been avoiding our, our mission, our call, if, if we uh, are, are fearful, if we make excuses, well, I'm not able to speak, or I, I'm not gifted here, or I don't know how to do X, Y, Z, or whatever it may be, um, it, it's time uh, to have that encounter with the Lord as Moses did and surrender to the voice of the Lord, who's the great I am. And he wants to be that great deliverer, that redeemer, that restorer. It's, it's not too late. He wants a pure and spotless bride to be a witness and a testimony for us to speak truth and to speak to these issues, uh, to not be silent or be afraid, not to back away. Uh, but it is time to, to take a stand. Uh, much like in Babylon with Daniel and his friends. They, they wouldn't bow down when everybody else was, and they stood up, um, and they faced the consequences. And once again, the Lord came through and used them and delivered them. And that's what God wants to do. Uh, he wants to snatch people out of this uh, destructive spirit. And he wants to take the blinders off. He wants to you know remove the hardness. He wants people to come in to the kingdom. He wants to have mercy and compassion and kindness, and we're to be that conduit, those vessels, to show them the truth in love. And uh, and so it is a, a, a daunting task, but it is one that he will equip us and empower us to do, just like he did with Moses. He's going to release signs and wonders. He's going to confirm his word. It is going to happen, uh, and he wants to do it uh, with us to prepare uh, as forerunners before the the major, uh, you know, catastrophes begin to unfold. I mean, all, all these things are catastrophic and they are leading somewhere, but it is a chance. It's an opportunity for people to be able to wake up and to turn. It's an opportunity for the church to shine light into this darkness. It is an exposure uh, and it is a revealing, but so that God can bring healing and revival and awakening. And so uh, anyway, I'm excited about this study in the life of Moses. There's so much we can glean from it. Uh, but it should cause us to pray, and it should cause us, uh, you know, to pause and to say, okay, here, where, where are we on the calendar of God? You know, we want to be like the sons of Issachar who were discerning the times and the seasons, and they knew what to do. We want to have that wisdom. We want to be good stewards. Once again, our kids and our grandkids, they're going to be facing unprecedented challenges, and we've got to, to be able to, to model something uh, for them that is real, that's authentic, that is bold, that is powerful, that can make a difference uh, in this generation. It's worth it to do this. It will be sacrificial, and there, there will be a hard things to face. Uh, the persecution is a guarantee. I mean, Jesus said it. If you decide to follow me and speak truth, they're going to persecute you the way they did me. Uh, but once again, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of glory and grace will rest on us. I promise you, uh, He's going to move. He wants uh, heaven to come to earth. He wants His will to be done in this kingdom to come. That's how He taught us to pray. And that's how we're going to pray and believe. So uh, I hope this has been uh, helpful, and uh, and hopefully it'll give you an idea of how we're going to continue to proceed on these things. So thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time.